Hello and welcome to my devlog. My name is Torsten Lawrence. We'll be talking about a game that I've been building in Rust using the Great Berry Engine version 0.8. First we'll walk through the game and then we're going to look at some debugging tools I'm using while developing it to iterate much faster than if I had to restart it all the time. We'll look at some issues that I had rendering light which might be interesting to some fellow devs and how I use Blender to create the assets for the game. And we'll talk about the time map that the game uses under the hood and how it then maps to the 3D world position. And finally, we'll address playability and how it was improved in the game. As promised, we'll start with a walkthrough through the game. So just jump here. And uh, as you can see here, this is a kind of a tomb style game where the player is exploring and maybe finding things, sometimes tools or utensils that help him explore the maze even better. And obviously there will be an end goal uh, for, that the player has to achieve. So at this point, we're just walking through here. And uh, I'll talk about these torches a little bit more in detail uh, in a second. Um, here we can see that, oh, we just found a flashlight and uh, also that the ground looks 3D-ish. And we'll talk about how we achieved that in Blender uh, to make it look like that. And here we can see that we can pick up that flashlight um, and the highlighting happens with a um, kind of a capsule. And the reason is because Bevy Mod Picking currently doesn't really support uh, easily to make this flashlight uh, kind of pickable, like make that GLTF uh, mesh pickable. So instead, we uh, added this helper here, and now we have a flashlight. And we can kind of shine around here. And as you can see on the top, uh, it explains how to use a flashlight. We can turn that on uh, with T uh, and turn it off, and we can also toggle it down here. So there's some uh, kind of a HUD um, that's a, a 2D UI. Now we can keep walking around here. And um, then we'll find a compass. We can only find it actually if we have the light turned on. And as you can see, we can light around here. And if we step a little closer, we can see some nice little effects there with the with the shadow of the compass. So it looks uh, actually pretty nice. And now if I pick that compass up, in the uh, bottom left now, we can see the direction that we are facing, which is uh, really important. So uh, now we're going to talk actually about the torches and uh, the lighting and kind of what issues I run into, uh, as well as the debugging tools that I used in order to kind of uh, triage this. So uh, let's talk about the debugging tools and uh, the lighting, which was tricky um, to get right. So here we can see that we have some torches, right? Um, and we can see that they actually the shadows up here move um, down here and as, at the same time they are also kind of going um, kind of like gaining light and, and reducing the light effect. Uh, and um, this is basically achieved with two ways. Uh, one is that we have a translation enabled. So that means that the fl uh, flicker basically moves, like the light moves around on the y and x axis. Now if I turn that off, uh, we can see that now it's no longer uh, moving, like the shadows are no longer moving, but we can still see the uh, kind of a flicker of the light uh, kind of shining brighter and less brighter. And that's basically flicker intensity. So you can see I can just easily turn that off and and on again. And, and that was really, really useful uh, while um, basically debugging this and trying to figure out what are the right settings for this, especially with the translate. Like I could basically uh, play with the min uh, here. And if I set it lower, much lower, for instance, like the light you will see starts moving around a little too much eventually. Um, and so I could tweak this while the game was running. It was super useful. So I created a resource here that then uh, was basically um, constantly synced. And that only happens in dev mode, meaning if I'm running uh, in debug, I have a plugin that kind of uh, picks up that uh, resource and then constantly syncs it with these settings on these torches. Um, and now I can actually use that same debugging tool in order to uh, demonstrate the problem with the lighting that I had. So um, if I turn shadows off, then you can see suddenly that there's light shining through here. And from my understanding, that is because the uh, calculations on uh, how the light should basically uh, expand and where it should show are much simplified if uh, this is off. Now we can probably see this also if you look at diagnostics, you can see I have a certain frame count right now. I have 36 and if I turn the shadows on, 
you can see it's going down. And obviously right now I'm in, in a spot where probably the calculations are very intensive. Also, I'm running in debug mode. Uh, but you can clearly see that there is more going on if I turn the shadows on, right? Uh, and then, but then it's also more accurate. If I turn it off, we have this light shining through here again. Um, what also was really useful for debugging uh, was the ability to uh, basically uh, click escape here. Uh, I mapped it to escape and then be in this kind of fly cam view. And then I can over here in my hierarchy, I, I named everything really well. So which is basically you just insert the resource name new and you name it whatever you want. And so for instance, I can go to the player quickly. I can click on the player and I can just press F and now it focuses on the player, which at this point I'm kind of like simulating uh, with the capsule because the player actually never will really see it himself or herself um, because it's going to be in first um, person kind of perspective. And now you can basically um, look around here um, and, and, and kind of also tweak things while this is going on. For instance, here I could uh, go and, and try to find the, um, the torch, for instance. Um, and so what I did, for instance, here was I went to the flame and I would focus on it. And now we kind of went way out and I, I'm not sure why that happened, but if I, yeah. So sometimes it doesn't work as expected, but the idea is that um, I think something just went wrong with these tools maybe. It's selecting like everything. So I might be in, uh, I might be in a weird mode. Um, but the, but basically what I was trying to show is that you can then focus in on something and you can um, tweak it uh, while the game is running. Um, which you're used to. Also, if something, for instance, is not showing and you don't understand why, and I still don't know what I did here to uh, enable that. Um, but anyhow, if something is kind of not showing and you don't know where it is, you can just click it over here and you can focus on it. And obviously, um, I'm actually going to restart the game uh, now in order to uh, show this more properly. So let me do that real quick uh, because something is a little odd. So let me bring that back here. And uh, let me go back here. It should actually work better. So if I want to go to one of these torches, right? And I focus in on it and then I have to zoom it around. But now basically I'm focused on that torch and now I can play around with that. And for instance, if that torch was not visible or something, I could debug why. I can also play with the with the transform, obviously, right? I can, I can this is basically how I positioned it. Uh, I kind of looked over here, for instance, to position it exactly against the wall. Uh, where I wanted it and, and, th and things like that. It's really, really useful. And um, and I'm, let me move it back out. <laughs> and uh, that was super, I cannot emphasize enough, uh, set this up for you. Uh, I will have links for the two, I'm basically using two libraries. One is responsible for this kind of view and the other one is responsible for uh, the, the fly cam and, and, and kind of this uh, entire view over here. Uh, and it's super essential and it's actually by the same author. And as I said, I will uh, link this in the, in the show notes. Um, and one thing also I had to do here, you can actually see, I put this on purpose here, is, is a roof. Uh, and you can see that it's double. And I'm going to show when I, I talk about the Blender uh, aspect, um, what I did there. But basically, I have like a double roof. And that was also because even with the shadow enabled for the sun, uh, the sunlight would actually kind of penetrate through the roof here if I didn't have that. Obviously, I could have had a box, but I felt like uh, wait, having at least two planes instead is a little less uh, vertexes. So I went with that. So we talked about debugging. We also already talked about the light issues. And this brings us to Blender. So Blender was actually a tool that I resisted for the longest time. I thought it's going to be really hard to learn. But actually, with the right videos, it's not that difficult. Um, and I'm going to link the uh, ones that help me most in the show notes. So here, for instance, we see uh, the wall um, and uh, we can also see down here. So this is the shader view um, and how these <clears throat> basically these different um, textures were applied to get this uh, the D 3D effect, right? If you don't apply, for instance, normals, you're not going to have a 3D effect. The other thing you have to learn uh, is how to make them kind of uh, continuous and how to kind of make sure that uh, they kind of fit together, right? And that is uh, done via UV editing. So here you can see that I basically um, kind of had to figure out how to group, uh, how to basically map this texture to these different faces here. Um, that wasn't like, once I, you kind of learned this, it's actually not that hard. So I recommend you to just play around with it and learn it a little bit. 
And it gives you, uh, at that point, then a much wider range of assets that you get to use, and you can also make your own assets. Uh, another thing, for instance, that I downloaded just from Sketchfab was uh, this compass. So um, in this compass, if you look at in, in, in the shader, it's really nice, uh, and it basically has already these, these colors uh, or these textures um, hooked up. And that's how you can then basically import um, more realistic assets into your game and, uh, and then you also kind of learn how to how to change the scale so it fits into your game better and things like that um, and then we talked about the the double roof so let me see if i can find and as you can see i have for each uh, asset i have a different blender file uh, and i kind of manage that all in a different folder and i actually have that in a separate github repo that i check in and i kind of whenever i make a commit to my game i uh, i kind of mention there uh, kind of what state uh, the blender project had um so let me try to find the uh actually this is the roof so uh this is what i did double and you can see um, i did some culling there uh it looks like i forgot it um on that end or maybe that's in order to make sure the line doesn't shine uh, light doesn't shine through uh, but you can see that i i basically did two planes here and applied the same texture in one case at the bottom and the other case um at the top um, in order to ensure that uh, these roofs would basically not let the the sun uh, shine through. And it's kind of a hack. Um, I'm happy to hear um, comments uh, how to improve on that, but that's what uh, worked for me. Um, now, the other thing uh, that really helped me was that uh, you can easily just re-export this GLTF. So I've actually made a, made a shortcut for myself so I can quickly... Uh, for instance, re-export this directly into the game. And if you only sh change textures, you can actually then in, in Bevy turn on uh, asset uh, hot reloading. And uh, while the game is still running, then uh, you can actually see how, how they apply. For instance, if I go back to the wall, um, <clears throat> while I was playing with, with this, right, um, I could then see what, what does this wall now look in, in the game itself um, and, and kind of uh, troubleshoot or whatever. And the other thing is, as I said, we have to like uh, look, and I'm going to show this in the game in a second. But basically, uh, I've, uh, it's very important to know how to use these textures, especially if you want a, a, a kind of a 3D-ish view. Uh, for instance, here we have normals. Now, if I turn this off, this is a normal. If I mute that for a second, we can see that now it looks totally flat, right? It just looks, it doesn't look very good. So let me actually move that out of the way. Um, and zoom in a little bit here. You can see that if you look sideways, there's nothing here. But if I unmute this, um, we can see a 3D-ish kind of effect. And it doesn't render it always like um, the uh, here. Actually, now we can see it much better, right? Um, so if I turn this off now, we can see it's solely flat. With the normals, it looks uh, very uh, 3D-ish. And um, I will show this now uh, in the game. So I'm back in the game now, and I went up to this torch, and here we can clearly see that the wall looks plastic, and you can see that better when there's a light source, especially when it's moving. And this is because if you define the normal of your texture correctly, uh, then uh, the light, I guess, basically how the light gets reflected is defined by that normal texture, uh, or the normal map, as it's called. And, and then it gives it this um, uh, plastic effect because the GPU basically simulates uh, uh, the way that the light would bounce off this wall. Okay, so let's continue and talk about the time map and how it maps to work position. And there's actually um, a nice way to show this probably with Blender. So imagine uh, you have a time map like this, right? And for instance, I define a box here. Well, I can then render it actually like this, right? So I basically uh, put it into like a, a 3D view, even though everything can be defined in uh, in kind of a 2D-ish uh, way. And that's basically what I'm doing in this game. So this is uh, the world of the game. This is the maze. And so uh, these are walls. Uh, the seas, for instance, a compass. And then everywhere where I have this little hat, that's uh, where I put the roof. And these are, for instance, like let's say I want to change this and I want to move the player um, and move them here. Um, and then I save it and all I have to do then is basically just restart the game and uh, the player now will start somewhere else. So we saw before where the player started. And in this case, 
the player will start in a different spot. And um, so now I'm inside, right? I'm starting inside. Now let's say this this uh, torch here, I don't like it. Uh, it's supposed to be on this side of the wall. So then I can just go back. Um, and uh, so this means that uh, it's pointing down. If I change it to this, it's going to point uh, to the right. And then all I have to do is restart the game and um, and wait a little bit because it's basically recompiling since I changed uh, the the file gets basically gets pulled in and now you can see that the um, that the a torch is on this side um, so that really helps a lot with uh, iterating quickly um, and I could actually go to an online uh, maze generator and just have it generate as as text and another um, interesting thing then is that the collision detection doesn't have to use ray casting or anything like that like expensive basically i can say if the player for instance is on this tile right and it tries to move in in this direction uh, i basically check if that tile basically has uh, a wall in it um, and if it does well then uh, the player can't go there so uh, i want to show this again if i um, start the game and I'm just going to try to walk into this wall now. It doesn't let me, right? Um, another thing um, that I did, and I'm going to show this in a second, there was to um, improve the playability. So let's actually just jump into that. Um, but I'm realizing that the game is slightly out of view, so let me move that in. Um, but uh, basically, what I did is like I didn't want the player to get stuck in a wall and you have to uh, correct. So what I did is basically, if you run into a wall and you run straight, it auto corrects. You see that how it rotated. So it rotates the player uh, to improve uh, playability because especially if you walk kind of in this in this area here, and um, that's where I would like my pressure. And if you get stuck here or whatever stuck here, like it'd be just frustrating. Uh, it doesn't add to the enjoyment uh, of playing the game. So I um, I basically uh, improved on that by just auto-correcting. And the other thing that are related to playability we already kind of saw, um, we already saw that uh, we can control the flashlight separately. So let me actually um, uh, restart the game um, and show that. So I'm going to restart it and I'm just going to show real quick um, again how the uh, flashlight was uh, kind of made more fun. Um, so first of all, the, the pickup is kind of intuitive, even though it doesn't look that great yet, but hopefully I improve on that. But the cool thing is that you can actually move the flashlight around without moving the player. You can actually kind of point the flashlight, uh, which kind of makes it more fun and, and so on. And also the interactive HUD here uh, basically helps the player see how much um, battery is still left and kind of also allows people that can't remember that shortcut to interact uh, with, the, uh, with the flashlight. Um, and that is all I wanted to show for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure, if you've made it this far, make sure to give me a like. Uh, that tells me that uh, people actually enjoy these kind of devlogs and I'll make more. And also subscribe to my channel um, in order to uh, know when I publish another video. So thank you very much. Um, and I hope you'll be back um, for the next one. Bye bye. So there's this famous uh, one last thing. Um, I talked about the tile maps and I did not mention Handmade Hero, um, which is a video series by someone who created a game from scratch. And he explains in very much detail how tile maps work, work how they implement it. And uh, I will uh, add a link to the, uh, the episodes that are most relevant for uh, in understanding how maps and how they map to what position and so on. So thank you for watching. Bye.